everyone, I'm Jack, UI UX designer, illustrator, animator, and donut connoisseur, and welcome to Adobe Live. I have a super fun stream for you all today. We're going to be working in Adobe Express and Adobe Illustrator back and forth using assets from our library um, to create a haunted botanical garden. I don't know if, I see a bunch of people joining the chat, I don't know if Stian is there, but we can thank Stian and Sean for the uh, recommendations. Uh, Stian wanted to see a haunted botanical garden, and so I thought this would be a great stream to do uh, today. I see lots of people joining us in the chat already and throwing their suggestions in. Uh, we're gonna be creating a haunted botanical garden, so if you have any good plant puns, Halloween puns, any kind of fun, spooky things you want to see added to our scene, or any um, fun, spooky plants. They could be real or they could be imaginary. If you just want to make up a plant, go for it. Um, and we can throw it into our uh, botanical garden. So let's get over to my screen over here. I've got Adobe Express open and we're going to start off by making a new document. So I'm just going to go up to the top here and I am going to make a custom sized document. Uh, we're going to do, let's not do 256, let's do 2000 by 2000 to get started. So it's going to be a square document, um, and I'll show you why in a second. So just like that, we've got our document open, and the idea today is that we're going to be remixing elements that we already have created. If you've got a lot of, um, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, clever in the chat says Jack is out of her gourd. I love it. <laughs> um, if you have a lot of illustration work that you've done in the past, you've spent a long time working on something and you're like, oh my gosh, I would, I wish I could use this, um, these pieces and parts um, over and over again because I spent a ton of time on them. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can take those, remix them, reuse them and create new designs in new styles um, by using, we're gonna be using Adobe Express, we're gonna be using Illustrator libraries and we're gonna be using generative um, recolor to kind of change some colors in our assets. So I've got this document. Um, I'm going to jump over to one of my favorite uh, features that I got introduced to, um, again, by Sean Kozel, this grids feature. Um, this speaks to my um, UX design, UI UX designer heart, because if I just drag one of these in, let's pick someone, one that's got like a lot of pieces and parts. We want to have a lot of windows um, to kind of play around with. So I'm going to go over here and let's just do, gosh, what do you guys think? Let's do, I want like a long window framed by like some smaller windows. Let's just start with this one. I'm just gonna drag this in. And when you have this grid, um, it's gonna create these little cells for you. And you can go in here and you can actually like move the image around inside of these cells. You've just got some placeholder. You can also adjust the padding. Um, so the outside, if we want to have some space from the distance, um, actually let's scale this up. I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna have this fill my entire screen. The thing I love about this is that as you make adjustments to this, um, we drag these little, um, I don't know what you call it, these little handles at the top and the bottom, um, everything moves responsively, which I love. So if you create this grid, you can have everything kind of have consistent spacing no matter what you do. So this is a great way to kind of set up our windows for our botanical garden if we imagine that we're putting together this composition um, and you just want to lay things out and see how they're going to look. Um, maybe I want to have like a, a longer window over here or like, let's make this like a skinnier window and have like a square window at the bottom here or something like that. So you can start to play with these shapes. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually, um, if you click in here and we click on our photo, I'm just going to delete that. And you're like, oh my gosh, you broke it. No, no, we're all good. Um, if you remove the photo from the cells, um, because it just kind of puts these placeholders there, um, you can actually click on the empty cell. I'll show you without, um, you know, if you accidentally click off of it, you could just get back in by clicking in the general area. And over here, you're going to see you've got a little fill. So we can go in here and we can add some fill colors just as placeholders um, so that we aren't kind of distracted by the photos. And as we add elements to this, it's actually going to keep these um, background colors included as we place assets into these cells. So we're going to go through and I'm just going to clean out all of this stuff so I have kind of like a blank canvas to work from. And um, so now we've got all of our, like, we've got our grid. I like the way that it looks. We've got a start to this. Um, Douglas in the chat's asking, can you easily reset the windows to original your, um, your grid? I don't think there's a way to reset the grid as to how you had it originally. 
but you could always just go back to the uh, grids panel and grab another copy of the one that you kind of started with and drag it in and kind of start from the beginning again. So that's what I would do rather than try to like re uh, reorganize things and get it back into place. So like I said, we're going to be working with assets that we kind of already um, have illustrated. So I'm going to go over here. And this is an illustration that I did on my personal stream. We spent a lot of time on this, making all of these individual plants and things like that um, in this beautiful, very kind of summer scene, but now it's fall. We need to transition to the fall time. Um, Stian is saying, I think you need to reapply it. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not sure how you would go about doing that. If somebody in the chat knows, I'll be happy to demo it, but I don't think you can reset it. I think you'd have to put a new one in. Okay, so I've got these beautiful plants. I want to make use of them, right? We have all of these as individual assets. If I go into my layers, I did my due diligence to make sure that all of my plants are kind of like separately grouped, right? Um, so, but we don't, it's not summer anymore. We need to transition to the next season. So let's take these plants and let's bring them into the fall season. I've gone ahead already um, to make things easier on us. And I've put them into a library over here. So you can see all I did to add these is I just selected the individual um, groups that I have, so the individual plants. So let's see which one I've selected here. Whoop. Scrolling over, Woo, there we go. Um, and I added it to a library just by going to the bottom here and hitting add graphic. And then I also, after I added them into my library, I went ahead and named them all. I've got the pitcher plant, African violets, uh, the monkey tail, the watermelon, peperoma, I think it's called, bonsai tree. So I just went through and I added all of the different elements that I might want to take and remix into my new design, right? So I've got this beautiful library here. Um, and I also went ahead and I added in this background element. We created this tiling pattern um, for our brickwork. And all of this takes a lot of time to set up. You know, you need to get your, um, all, you know, to create a pattern instead of just laying out these bricks, right? But if you spend a little bit of extra time to like make sure you've got all of your assets kind of grouped and separated and you set up a repeatable pattern, you can then use these assets in other projects, which is what we're going to do today. So if I hop back over to Adobe Express, I can go over to my stuff and I can navigate to my library, which I have named Plants 2023. And I'm going to scroll down and I can actually add my bricks right to my um, design. So I'm just going to drag this in. It's going to place it there. I'm going to put it in place, scale it up. And it's over top. Now I could drag this kind of beneath my grid if I want to, or I can select this uh, set as page background here. And that's just going to put it behind my grid. And then I don't have to worry about accidentally like dragging this item around as I'm kind of working in the space. So. Um, and it's going to continue to update as I make changes to it um, using libraries. So we need to change some of these windows, I think. I think they're a little bit too, a little bit too dark, or maybe we want to have a mix, right? So um, I'm going to go in here and say maybe some of these are like windows that are turned off, so we can make them kind of like a dark purpley color maybe, something like that. Um, maybe we'll make this one over here on so we'll choose a color that's kind of like looks like a window that's kind of has a light on behind it but we want it to be a little bit spooky so let's go with like maybe like a red spooky light um and then i can go and just if i want to have that same purple here and i'm just kind of playing with things right now this is kind of like me blocking in my composition um so i'm not beholden to these colors i can go ahead and change them as we kind of work through this uh, design here. So I'm just gonna pick a couple of things. And the idea here is that I'm building this story with my existing elements, right? But it's gonna be kind of like fall, it's gonna be a different layout, we can add some text to it. Um, one of the things I think would be really cool to do with this, um, and we'll see if we have time, would be to make like a couple of panels, sort of like we're building out a, um, a comic or something like that. If you've ever seen on Instagram, people who post like, separate frames of a comic, right? With little um, clips, little like, little, maybe the plants are like having conversations or dialogues um, or whatever we decide to add. Um, so that's why I asked for any kind of puns that you have or any kind of um, elements we think we should add to our scene that are spooky. Um, we did get a couple of suggestions. I'm gonna go down. 
Uh, Clever asked for a bobbin for prickly pears. Prickly pears would be a good one. Um, let me scroll up here. Uh, Jacko planter. I love that. <laughs> Cycloptic fruit. Oh, I think it would be a really fun idea to put eyeballs um, in place of like flowers on some of our plants. Okay, so let's just kind of drag some in here. And I'm taking a look at my um, grid here. And I'm going to pick some plants that kind of fit in the space. And there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. But for now, I'm just going to like drag these in and see how they look in the space. Let's grab our burrow's tail. Burrow's tail plants, by the way, if you didn't know this about me, are one of my favorite plants. I just love the way they look. And um, there's one sort of important thing I want to note here, and that is that when you are working with a grid, you can actually add content, but that content has to be like uh, like a like a raster format. Um, you can't actually uh, drag, or you can't add um, Illustrator files here yet. But we can do we can. There's a little bit of a workaround that we can do to get our content kind of in those windows. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of putting my plants in there. And in the case of some of these, like, I don't think, um, I don't think I actually want, you know, I want some of these plants to be like fully visible inside of the space. So we're going to kind of just throw some plants in, make some adjustments. Let's see. Anybody have any particular plants that stand out to them that they want to see in the, in the design? The bonsai tree is always kind of a fun one. So I'll throw this one in here. And then what should we put in this one? Sort of like something a little bit wider maybe. Let's see, let's go with the calla lilies. Ooh, actually, what about the pepperoma? Let's see if we can get that one to fit in the space. Cause that one has like really fun colors, right? All right, there we go. And I'm leaving a little bit of space around. You know, we could add in like our little um, jellyfish octopus or uh, jellyfish air plants, and we can kind of have them kind of hang from the ceiling in some places as well. But I also want to leave some space for um, some elements. We're going to add some spooky elements. Snake plant is already spooky. You're right, Corey. Slaughter, slaughter melons? Oh, slaughter. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Afroja is saying the bonsai is looking good. CJ's pumpkins are plants. This is now like the second request for a pumpkin. So I'm definitely going to have to add a pumpkin. Okay, we've got a general layout going on. Now it's time to spookify all of this stuff. And I'm going to use, so let's uh, scroll on over here. I'm going to use um, generative recolor to do this. So let's pop open the plants that we ended up placing. Let's take a look. We have the peace lily. Let's open that one up. Gosh, sometimes I get blinds to which artwork I'm trying to open. There we go. Anybody ever have that? You're like looking and then you look back. Um, bonsai tree. Let's open up our watermelon pepperoma. It's no longer a watermelon pepperoma. Now it's a uh, pumpkin pepperoma. Burrow's tail, my favorite. Had to include the burrow's tail. And then let's go over here. We've got the octopus. Or calling an octopus plant. Maybe it is an octopus plant in this context. The jellyfish plant. And I think that's everything we've got in this illustration. Okay, so there we go. Now let's, oh, we need to open our bricks too. So we want this to be a spooky um, uh, botanical garden, a haunted botanical garden. So we're going to need to change the colors of this. And we kind of have two directions to go with this. Maybe the chat can help me decide. Um, while I work on some other things. We could either go really, really dark, like dark Victorian, haunted Victorian mansion, painted black brick kind of a look. Um, or we can go like crazy, vibrant, like orange, crazy colors. So man of war, Peter says, yeah, definitely. Someone suggested a ghost plant. That could be cool to recolor too. We could totally explore doing a ghost plant. Um, actually, while you're thinking about what we should do with the, the background color, let's actually try that. And I think, you know, now that I think about it, this would make a really cool ghost plant. So let's try that on our little pink jellyfish. And we can use a little bit of transparency to make that happen. Ooh, CJ says, yes, vote, I vote dark Victorian haunted. Or yeah, ooh, black light poster colors. That would be a good prompt. Um, actually clever. So maybe we'll try that. All right, so I'm going to select my plant here. And I'm going to go to recolor. And that's going to open up the general recolor. Um, I got to it from my uh, contextual toolbar. 
but you can also get to it by selecting what you want to recolor and going to object. I always do this. It's always, I always go to the wrong one. Edit, edit recolor artwork or generative recolor. It doesn't really matter which one of these you open. It's going to open up the general recolor um, panel and you can just tab between the two. So in this case, I'm going to hop over to generative recolor and I'm actually going to try maybe doing like a um, haunted, let's do like an occult ghost um what did we see say like i like this back lit idea back lit i can't spell all right we'll just see what happens right we, we can just experiment and see this may be this may not work out but we're gonna try it out okay so these are a little bit too vibrant Ooh, but they are really cool right um i kind of like Oh, I kind of like that one, but I also kind of like this one. This one is giving me more like ghost plant vibes, the second one. Let me know if you agree. Um, I think I'm gonna go with this one though, personal opinion, if nobody else had any suggestions. Um, and then what you can do to kind of like, I'm gonna actually put a background behind this so I can see what this looks like as we add a little bit of transparency to it. So we've got our um, design here. I can select, let's do this. Let's select all of the shapes that kind of make this up. And let's just add a little bit of transparency by adjusting the opacity. 25 is looking pretty good. Um, let's do 25. I wanna see what this looks like in a different color. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting enough um, of the color coming through. Okay, so not really. Some of these are a little bit too. Um, let's bring this down like five. Do I have like two things on top of each other? So I'm trying to add like some transparency to this. So I'm just going to add like some shapes. And then there we go. So you can see now we've got like some of those colors coming through. Um, it's got a little bit of transparency to it. You like the pale glows colors. Top right is very ghosty. All right, I made the right choice. So now we've got our little uh, ghosty plant here. And now do we need any other elements to make this look like a ghost? Should we change any other aspects of this um, plant? I think a mouth with teeth, Venus fly. Oh yeah, Venus fly trap. We could do that. Um, <laughs> the orange head works too if you add a jack-o'-lantern face. Should we add a face to the plant? I worry about that. I'm not sure how I feel about adding a face. Let's just save it for now so we can see what it looks like in our updated file. So I'm gonna hit Command S to save. It's gonna update it in my library. And then I'm gonna hop over here. Give it a minute. Oh, you know what? I might have updated the wrong one. Oh, there it goes. Maybe I, maybe I didn't. I have two pink ones, so if this one is not the right pink one, we can just drag in our next one. We're gonna give it a minute to update. Oh, that is a purple one. Here we go. If we have too many issues with this, um, I can't, like there is, a, so you can go back out and I can try making sure that I've got it up to date. If not, then I'm going to, um, uh, export this out and do it that way, which is no big deal. So we're going to save this as, I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And you can also drag um, assets in this way as well. Because there are many ways to accomplish the same task. Oh, but this one's having an issue too. Hmm. There we go. We got it working in the end. All right. So now we've got our little ghost plant in there. You can see that the background color is kind of coming on through. Um, so now let's uh, go back around. And I think we decided on, I don't know where this one went. There we go. We decided on making this brick pattern sort of Victorian mansion. So we're going to uh, go and recolor this one as well. So I clicked on the little recolor. We're going to go over to generative recolor and we actually can just use that prompt. So I'm going to go Victorian mansion. Um, we'll see what we get. 
if we get something that's a little bit too bright, I'll try haunted. If you add haunted in front of something, you're automatically going to get spooky colors. So a little bit too bright, although the green is, is interesting. That's for sure. This one's kind of cool in like, uh, if we were going for like that really, uh, bright orange kind of look that I was talking about, but let's go haunted or midnight, you know, um, midnight would also work. Um, AS is saying, so awesome. I think it's going to take a second to update. Yeah. I just, I want, I didn't want to linger. I wanted to make sure that we could, uh, get it in the, the file in there no matter what. There we go. There's like a nice dark, let's go haunted. Let's go midnight. I really want those dark colors. I think it'll look really nice, especially then we could go back through and maybe we could reconsider, like we could add some like frames as well. Actually, I think, I think I'm going to go with blue. What do you guys think? This one is kind of purpley and this one is a little bit more blue. Maybe this one. I don't know. Let's save it for now and we can see. We might have the same issue. Let's just kind of double check. Oh, give it a sec. Oh, I see it's updating now. So we did just need to kind of like give it a second to load. All right, while that goes, there we go. We're gonna go back. Cadaver greens and blues, yes. Um, let's go over here and let's work on some of our other plants here. So let's make some of these more like fall colors. What do you think? I'm gonna drag to select my pepperoma. And there's a number of ways that we can get kind of fall, fall warm colors, right? And they don't necessarily have to be like I could try it. Let's do like fall leaves, misty rise, um, and hit generate. You know things like fall pumpkin patch, hayride, um, haunted cemetery. Those would all be good prompts to kind of get the colors that we want. Um, ooh, that like hint of blue in there is so good. It's so hard to pick sometimes between like the the variations. What do you guys think? One, two, three, or four. Let me know in the chat. It's pumpkin spice color. You t yeah, you could totally do pumpkin spice color. Uh, but one of the other prompts that I like doing is um, doing a brilliant, vivid sunset because it gives you like those purples and like the same kind of oranges. Uh, Clever likes the blue. All right, we'll go with the blue. I really like that one too. It's kind of giving this like sort of like preserved flower look that I like. And we're just going to do save. And then I'm just going to move along and do a couple more while when, and then we can go back and kind of let everything update at once. I'm going to go to recolor and we're going to do generative recolor and let's do that vivid, brilliant sun set that I was talking about. And I can kind of show you um, what I was talking about with like those yeah, see, I love, this is like one of my go-to prompts for like fall colors because you get those like purples. I'm telling you, it looks so good. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I just like bright colors. <laughs> Oliver said, I like the blue too, but couldn't remember the number. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think we got the most votes for the, I see four, three. Um, it looks kind of poisonous. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. We'll do a little bit of a save. Let's make, let's go over here and do an update and see how we look. We need to get to the peace lily um, and the burrow's tail, but you know, you can let things update in the meantime. There we go. There's a little bonsai tree. Might need to change the background windows. Maybe they should all kind of be turned on and then we could put stuff into the background. So it looks like we got everything updated. Let's go to our peace lily. We'll do another recolor here. Um, I saw somebody say autumn colors or pumpkin spice colors. So let's try those as prompts. So I'm going to go over here. Let's just see pumpkin. I just want to, I'm curious, pumpkin spice, a pumpkin spice peace lily. I like that name. Ooh, a snake head on each of the burrows tail. Yes. I love that. There we go. All right. Ooh, I like that. That kind of looks like crispy dead leaves, um, which I think works well for autumn. That one too. I don't know. 
Oh, it's so hard to choose, you guys. Um, I think maybe the first one. I think maybe the first one. The first one? Yeah, amazing, the first one. All right, we'll go with this one. And then I'm gonna do uh, a save. And I think we've got the Burrow's tail left, so let's do this one. And let's try something like, uh, oop, I don't wanna, there it is, recolor. Um, do we have any kind of like, can we, th are there like orange, uh, let's try like Halloween boa constrictor. <laughs> Like, thinking, like, um, snakes, you know? Like, the life was drained from it, Umicorn says, yeah, uh-huh. Ooh. Oh, wow, that would be really cool with the, like, the greens. It doesn't have a lot of contrast, though. I just kind of click through. And you could always generate more if you weren't happy with the first results. This one's kind of giving me snake skin. So I might go with that one. There we go. Ooh, I like that too. Mm. I think I'm gonna go with this one. This one, for some reason, I'm getting the most like kind of snake skins uh, from this one. So we're gonna go with that. And we'll just do a save. We'll hop back over here. Everything's gonna update, but in the meantime, I am gonna make the executive decision to make all of these. Um, maybe orange. There we go. Update, 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 update. But maybe a darker orange? I have to think how I want these to look. We could do like or variations of orange as well. What if we did, let's see this. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Let's make an adjustment here. Red? What about like a maroon? Hmm. No, maybe like just lighter yellow. Like a lighter color. Maybe they can all be different colors. Like a little bit different, each one. Each room has different lights or something. Let's go adjust. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I want them all to be the same. I think this is my favorite color, so I'm going to use that one. I'm checking to make sure that I've got good contrast while I'm doing this, um, because otherwise my plants won't be visible. All right, so now we've got it like the lights are all on in here, right? We've got our spooky background. We've got a little ghosty plant up there. Let's go back over here. And I'm gonna make a new document now because I want to add some additional um, elements. We're gonna add pumpkins for sure. Oh, Jenny's asking, can you add a frame? Yes, and that is a great idea. And I'm going to do that by going to um, elements here and I'm gonna go to shapes. So you've got a bunch of different kind of like pre-added or pre-built um, assets in um, Adobe Express. I personally really, really like um, the shapes because they have a lot of options, like the, um, the lines and stuff, like they kind of like expand and sometimes like repeat. I'll show you in a sec. So if I go into frames here, we can actually pick one of these uh, style frames. I think this one down here. And we can kind of add this over top. And this is what I mean when I say that like these are, um, oh, I'm having trouble today. There we go. We'll decrease the weight a little bit. Maybe I need to make this window a little bit wider. Let me do that. Well, let's make this one a little bit wider. That way our frame fits nicely over top. And you can change the color of these um, assets as well. So if we kind of think about this as like our window frame, and you could draw your own window frame as well in Illustrator, 
or um, Photoshop. You could really use any assets. If you wanted to, you could um, you could even like use pre-built assets in that um, in the elements panel. Like I'm sure they have plants in there and stuff. If you wanted to experiment and explore with those. So I'm just going to copy this frame across. So we're kind of framing our plants in here. And I'm, you know, I'm okay with the style um, being a little bit kind of like a little whimsical almost, like with the frames kind of like not quite covering, like you could see a little bit of transparency through them. I kind of like that. Make sure we select our plant here, we'll scale it down, move this down. Jay saying that looks so good. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and when I picked the, you know, I just kind of like changed this to be a, um, a gold color since I thought that had really nice contrast. So far, this is looking very like, uh, elegant. I have to say, I wasn't expecting that. Um, it looks very elegant with the color palette that we have going on. Very like elegant fall. Um, like a window frame with broken glass in front. Oh, you could do like a little broken glass like shape or something like that if you wanted to put over top. Um, one idea that would be a lot of fun would be like a boarded up window. Um, you could even probably use something like this and create like boards if we change the color. Let's go to custom to like a kind of like a brown. And if you added like some text that said like, do not enter, <laughs> um, you could totally do like a a boarded up kind of window type of a thing. S spooky window. You know, or make your own, make your own uh, assets as well. So I'll just leave that in there for now. Um, the ghosts are home not to water for their ghost plants. Oh, are you at we could add some ghosts too. Condemned. Tilt the board. We could put condemned on there for sure. Let's go. Let's add some text. Oop, condemn, condemned. And um, let's make this a little bit smaller, put it over top. I think we wanna make this probably all caps. Let's pick a font. And I just wanna show you this real quick. Um, if you didn't know this, Adobe Fonts if you go browse all fonts, uh, they actually have a Halloween category, which is super fun. And you can pick super spooky fonts. Um, some of these might be a little bit too stylized um, for what we're doing um, with this sign, uh, but you can kind of browse through and find something that works. I like to sort these by newest because I like to see what the uh, latest and greatest. Ooh, paint font. Yeah, let's see if we can find something uh, texture, Jenny. Something that's got a little bit of texture to it. Maybe this shrunken head. It looks like I already have it activated. This or this one. Let's try both. I'm going to try shrunken head and this uh, Bimbo Pro. So let's try shrunken head. Try shrunken head. Oh, I don't think I had it selected. Actually, let's try the first one. Oh my gosh. Y'all, I don't know why I'm having selection problems. B-I-M-B, there we go. Oh, how do we get the drip, the drippiness though? Oh my gosh. Oh, there it is, dripping. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit, scale it down. Oh, there's no T, that's what you guys were talking about, okay. It's a little bit hard to read, but maybe it's okay. Maybe it gives the right vibe. And then like, we, obviously we would want this to be like in red paint, right? Let's go to custom. Drag it up. I'm actually gonna start, let's do like dark here. Um, let me try something. I want to do like, 
Oh, I don't want a shadow. Let's try strong. Let's bring this around. Just to make sure. Mm, that's not really the look I want. Oh, actually. Yeah, I just have the highlight in the wrong spot. I was trying to add like a little bit of a highlight to it. I just need to rotate the angle around. There we go. Now it's got like a little bit of a highlight to it, right? Group. All right, so we've got our condemned um, type here. Let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna do a similar thing here to help it stand out. Um, oh, maybe I can't. Let's copy and paste this element. I'm gonna bring it behind. I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna use a multiply. And then I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. <laughs> Clever saying, yes, yeah, the blood of uh, the plant's enemies. All right, bring it up a little bit. I'm just adding a little, a little bit like of a shadow to kind of visually separate it. There we go. There's our condemned sign at the top. <laughs> Board it up. All right, um, the next thing that we're going to make an X out of boards in the lower window. We could keep going with that. I want to show you a couple of illustration tips, though, um, in Illustrator because I want to add some other elements as well. So we've got our plants that we've already illustrated, um, but let's add some additional elements to kind of make this feel a little bit more uh, Halloween-ish, spooky-ish. Um, it's looking pretty fall right now, um, but let's see. So. Um, pumpkins. I'm going to show you how to create a little uh, pumpkin friend here. I like to start with shapes when I work. Um, I think that's kind of a good way to get something down on the canvas pretty quickly. So I'm just going to draw out a circle. I'm going to use the direct selection tool to select the top and bottom to make kind of a squishy shape for our pumpkin. Switch our fill and stroke and we'll make this nice and orange. Nice orange color. There we go. So there's kind of the base of our pumpkin. And then I'll draw out another shape because this has to be a carved pumpkin. We'll make this like a darker color. This is like the inside of our pumpkin, right? I could do the same kind of a thing. I can kind of pull this up. So we want this to be like the cut edge of our pumpkin. I'm gonna go to object. Um, this is another one of my favorite tools. Um, object, path offset path and I'm going to use a negative value that's just going to offset my path inside of my original shape the offset path is going to give you equal distance all the way around your original shape versus um, if you just scale it you can see that it you end up being like uneven so I like to use that tool just to get like a nice perfect kind of shape and I'll pull it up a little bit you know in perspective and then we'll just use the eyedropper to change the color okay so um, I'll use a little trick to make a stem on our pumpkin. I'm just going to use the pen tool to drag this out. I'm going to select this color, make it a stroke. I'm going to increase the stroke weight quite a bit. There we go. Make a little stem. You can even do this. And then I'm just going to use the width tool on this. So I'm going to go over here, another one of my favorite tools. And I'm just going to shrink it down a little bit so it kind of looks like, you know, if you've ever seen one of those pumpkins, they have like a little narrower stem um, where they attach to the uh, vine. And then I'm going to do, uh, let's add a face to this little friend. Change that to a fill. We need to decide if this pumpkin is uh, grumpy or uh, cute. Um, I'm going to lean in towards cute, but we can always change the facial expression. Let me know. So I'm going to put some little eyes, let's make these little eyes here, rotate them around, scale this up a little bit, because no pumpkin carving that I've ever done has been uh, perfectly even and symmetrical. Cute! All right, we've got to vote for cute. So we're going to make a little nose here, a little triangle nose. Ooh, I like it. I like the idea of it being like a little bit off. There we go. <laughs> we'll bring it up, sort of like a witch's nose. Scale it down, right? Got a little nose. Now we need to add like a, a big wide 
smile. Very happy pumpkin. There we go. We can adjust this a little bit if we're not happy just by going in and manipulating the anchor handles again. There's a little pumpkin. Go. Out a little bit more. We'll add, uh, add in some teeth. Just like this. There we go. Copy and paste. Scale this up. Narrow it. Go, copy and paste. I'm just reusing elements again, just like I would my illustration. Maybe around these corners a little bit since everything else is a little bit round. Um, and then I'm gonna show you a trick to adding in the, I'll show you two tricks. The first one I'm gonna show you is how you can add in some lines to kind of, you know how pumpkins have like segments, they're bumpy. So I'm gonna hit Command C and Command F and I'm gonna select my darker color and switch it to a stroke. Copy and paste that. So I'm gonna make some uh, like sections here, right? For our pumpkin. And in terms of perspective, they're gonna look narrower on the outer edges and then get wider as you go in. So there we go. I'm gonna delete that outside one and then I'm gonna use a dashed line. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna increase this. We can actually see it. And then make these uh, have corner and round corners and end caps. Go and use a dash line. I'm going to switch this to something like really large, like a hundred. And then we could change the distance to something smaller, like 50. Bring this down a little bit. And this kind of gives that like, if you've ever seen those illustrations where they use, uh, I, that I use a lot, where I'll have like a highlight line that kind of breaks up. That's kind of the look we're going for here. And you can adjust um, these individually if you want it. So if you wanted these ones to be, have slightly wider parts, we can increase the line size. So you can kind of like adjust these a little bit. I'm just increasing, you know, changing these values to give it some little, let's make this, there we go. So there we go, we have a little pumpkin, friend. Um, if you want to add a little bit of shading, I'll show you this trick really quickly. I'm gonna copy and paste, offset this. Paste in front, I think I just made a group. Um, select both of these, make a little pathfinder. I can just select my fill, oop, wrong one. Hang on, there we go. I needed to use, make sure I use minus back. Uh, select the color there, and then I'll just bring down the opacity. And give it a little shadow underneath as well. And there's a little pumpkin friend. You can use the same trick I used for shading if you wanted to add a little bit of details into the face. But I want to show you one more thing. We're going to add another spooky element to this before we end. So I'm going to go to graphic. It's going to add a little pumpkin graphic in here. We can add to our scene. Um, the other thing I want to do is a little, uh, I want to do a little scary spider. A little spider friend. So there's a really easy way to make a uh, spider web by going to the polar grid tool. And I'm just going to drag this out. I want to increase, I want to decrease using the up and down arrows the number of radia radiating circles, and I want to increase the number of um, lines just like that. And um, let me double check. If you double click, you can see the number of uh, dividers. So we've got 12 dividers. That's important to remember. Remember the number of dividers that you have. We're going to delete the outside edge, make sure we set this to have uh, a line color so we can see it. And then I'm going to go to my polygon tool and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to either increase or um, using the up and down arrows or I can just double click in here. Or maybe not. All right, we'll do it the, the old fashioned way. So I'm going to start with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. So now we've got twelve rotate it and now we've got points on each of the ends there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with my um, curvature pen tool and I'm going to click in the middle and I'm just gonna drag in just like that so we can add and again uh, spider webs aren't perfect so it's okay if they're not like perfectly you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, there, it's a, a, you know, a spider made this. 
It's handmade. Steve, our spider friend. There we go. So we got some shapes there. I'm gonna copy and paste and just kind of scale this in. Um, again, spider webs have um, imperfect, like they, the distance gets kind of like smaller. Um, so I'm gonna kind of mirror that idea as I make these, pulling them in, making them have kind of smaller and smaller distances, just copying and pasting to make our illustration. All right, let's make this all like one point line. I'm gonna make a group of this and then I want this to kind of be in the corner. So what I can do is I'm actually gonna use the lasso tool and I'm just gonna kind of select so I can just have like a corner. Oh, I selected too much. There we go. Select over there. I find the lasso tool is a little bit easier when you're trying to get an organic selection around some of these um, rather than like individually selecting the points and things. So there we go. So now we've got a corner spider web. So let's go ahead and add these graphics. There we go. We'll add this one. So we've got some spider webs. And then we'll do like a really quick spider. We'll change this. We'll make it, we're going to make it black. We'll leave it black. It's fine. I'm tempted. All right, fine. I like making things purple. <laughs> and then we'll do like a little, let's make this. Somebody asked for an eye so that we can reuse this eye um, in our plants as well, which I don't think we'll have time for because we're coming up to the hour mark very quickly. Um, but let's make this like a green, like a green color. Uh, spooky spooky green there we go oh I did that the opposite way okay let's make this oh you guys pitched the wrong thing okay there we go got a little bit of an eye going and then we need obviously the center Our spider has a giant eye. And then we're gonna add some little legs. So we'll do like a, ooh, there we go. Uh, we'll make this a stroke. And then I'm gonna go and just add like a, doot, doot, doot. If you don't make sound effects, what are you doing? <laughs> And I like the spindliness of these legs, actually. I'm fine with that, so. Let's do this really quickly. Here. Making sure I've got legs, copy, paste, object, transform, reflect, oop, not scale. There we go, rotate it around. Put the legs on the other side. Do a little spider web. There we go. We will add this to our assets. All right, so hopping back over into Adobe Express, let's go back to our stuff. And now we can start to add some of these other elements that we illustrated really quickly into the scene. So I'm going to drag in my spider web. We can throw this kind of in the corner. Over here, maybe. Actually, let's do it over here. Let's move our ghost plant over here. Bring our condemn sign in the front. Actually, let's move our condemn sign kind of up. Spider web, scale it down. Our stuff, add our little spider friend in. I'll have it like right here and then we'll go over here and we'll add our little pumpkin can't forget that guy <laughs> Stian says it's definitely a spider I don't want to find at home 
Are you telling me a spider made this web? I am. I am. All right, there we go. So now we got our little fall elements in here. And the other thing that I want to do um, is we'll add, like I said, we want to make this like a story. So let's go to our elements. This will be the last thing we have time for today, sadly. Um, and then I'll do like a, a quick recap and let you know where you can find me and all that. Oh gosh, where is it? Okay, speech bubbles, here we go. And then I'll just kind of throw one of these in here. Let's see, which one do we like? Let's go with this one. Ooh, we've picked our colors. I don't want a border. We will make this white for now. We will flip it. Oops, it's not. And scale it up. Let's scale it up this way. And let's add, you guys, I, you're gonna laugh. I wrote all kinds of copy ideas um, for today's stream. We didn't get through all of them. The one I'm gonna pick is feeling cute, might die later, um, because I don't know about you, but I'm notoriously bad at keeping plants alive. So we'll do feeling cute, might die later. Um, there we go. <laughs> um, just in case you didn't have any puns for me in the chat, I um, came prepared with some of my own jokes. Uh, some of the other ones were, let's do the Monstera mash, if we did the added the uh, Monstera to it. So, there we go. And I guess it should be a thought bubble, but maybe these plants can talk. They are spooky, spooky plants after all. <laughs> Sian's laughing. So there we go. Um, that's looking pretty good. You know, what I wanted to get to as well is you can use this. So this looks completely changed from um, where we started. If we go back and take a look at our original. Oh, you know what? I don't think. There we go. Our magical window plants. So there's kind of the original set. And if we go over here, you can see that we've started to put together a really fun haunted design. Um, some of the other things that you can do is you can actually take these background um, background elements here. You could recolor those as well. I separated those out. And those, you can export those out as PNGs or JPEGs, and you can throw them into the background um, so that you can have a little bit of like depth. I would actually put like a little bit of a blur on those um, as well. But if you follow me here on Behance or you follow me, um, I just go into my website, jackwatson.design. You can click on this links these are all of my social handles. It's easier to just kind of share them this way. So, uh, and I stream every Saturday and Sunday here on Behance. So um, we might take this and we might kind of finish it out over on my stream this weekend. Um, I want to kind of build out a couple of panels and I wanted to get to showing you how you could also use this to create like a botanical plate. Um, so you could kind of use this grid here, put your, your plant in and then using kind of like some of the copy that I came up with. Um, like the Kraken Cactus. Um, I came up with scientific names, descriptions. You can throw all of that in there as well. So <laughs> how much time did you spend on prep? It was a lot of fun coming up with the copy, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, well, that's gonna be all for me, sadly, today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this stream. Um, oop, there we go, hang on. There we go, there I am, um, and I will uh, see you next time. But stay here for more uh, live content up next uh, here on Beat Hands. Bye, everyone.